Hi, so this is going to be a quick onboarding video. If you're new with Unity or Survival Engine, I think that would be really useful to you to understand a bit how everything works and what are the possibilities with Survival Engine. So first I'm going to go import the package. So I'm going to go Asset Store. By the way, if you're in Unity 2020, uh, you will need to do that in the Package Manager instead because they change where you download assets. And I'm going to go in my asset, survival engine, and just import it. Import, install, and then click on import. Okay, now that everything is imported, the first thing you will want to make sure is that there are no errors at the bottom here. Uh, if there's warning should be fine they won't appear the next time you can just click on clear and if you still see errors here um, there's probably something wrong I uh, usually most of the time it's because there's an obsolete package that they're trying to load so you can um, sometime resolve that uh, by removing the package in package manager uh, I've seen this error sometimes uh, for the UI package manager which is obsolete after unity 2018 but right now I just imported and everything is good. So I'm going to go in um, survival engine. Here you still have the scenes folder, but this is from the Unity template when you create a new project. You can probably just delete this folder. I'm going to go in the survival engine scenes folder and open one of the map. Okay, all right. So um, now you probably just want to make sure that everything is working fine when you click on play. All right, so it's working. So now we should be able to start doing some changes. Note that if you're updating from a previous version and you have errors here at the bottom during runtime, uh, it's maybe because there are some things that were not updated correctly. So one thing that you can try is to go in tools and then fix project version. This will um, add or replace the scripts that have been changed from one version to the other. But you also have to be careful if you've made change yourselves, then uh, you would probably need to merge things manually. One thing that you probably want to do when you start editing is to duplicate the main map so that you're working on a fresh map instead of working on something that could be overwritten when you update survival engine. So I'm going to duplicate a large map, but you can also start from the blank one or anything and call it my map double click on it to make sure i'm loading this one and i'm not still into the large map it should show it here when it's loaded okay so no matter which scene you are loading or if you start a new scene you want to make sure that you have the manager prefab here as well as the player character and then the camera um if you want to change the camera from top down to uh, third person you can go in the prefab folder and then you have the camera third person so you can just drag it into the scene and then remove the old one and then when you start this um, it should change the camera mode here all right so now you're in uh, third person camera okay so one of the things that you can do is um, go in the prefab folder and then you have um, all the different objects that are included in the game there that you can just drag and drop on the scenes so if you're not familiar with prefabs in unity they are basically objects that already have colliders and script attached to them that you can just drag and drop and place in the scene as you want so if there's things that you don't want in the scene you can just remove them Later, you probably want to create your own prefabs and I've created a tools to easily do that. So if you go into tools, create new objects, here you have a window that will help you create your own objects with your own model. But this I explain how to use that in another tutorial video. Another part of the files that is very important is the resource folders. It contains all the data files that have like all the important information about all the objects in the game so for example if you uh, want to go in items 
click on one of the item you will have all the attributes related to that item and each prefab is linked to one of those data files one of the item properties that is important is the ID here the first one so this you really need to make sure that they are all different so if you have more than one different kind of axe for example make sure they all have a different ID otherwise they may reference the wrong thing uh, in the game they may try to load the wrong one another thing that is important is here at the bottom prefab this is really the link between the data file and the prefab file so they need to be uh, matching here so if I click on this one I have access to this item I can just put in a scene and then this item is also linking to the data file here so here on the crafting menu there's probably items that you don't want to have in your own game so I'll show you right now how to remove them so if you go in the resources folder and you click on either construction items or plant you can click on each construction and you have a checkbox here craftable so if you remove that it will stop appearing from the from the game so I can just select for example all the construction remove them select all the item also remove it now if I go in the game they should not appear in the crafting menu okay as you can see now there's just nothing so you can go and uh, add your own items I will show you later how to change the categories here so one of the things that you probably want to know is that when you add an item on the map let's say I add a tree it won't have a unique ID here by default so you need to generate your own unique ID by clicking on it otherwise without a unique ID it won't be uh, saved into the into the save file so each item need to have their own unique ID otherwise um, it won't work with the save system so by clicking here on generate unique ID it created one for the tree I can go the same thing here for the rock and also if you don't want to generate them one by one there's a tool here um, generate unique ID and if you click here it would generate all the empty ones in the scene there's also a tool to clear the unique ID you have to be careful though if you clear all the unique IDs then your old save files won't be compatible with the new ones because all the objects uh, that are safe they, they will lose track of their unique ID so the save file won't know which objects they are linked to so you have to be careful to keep the unique ID from one version to the other if you don't want the save file to stop working so if you're confused about ID what is the difference between this ID here and then the unique ID that we have directly on the object so this one is uh, not unique to each object in the scene it's really unique to that type of item while this one needs to be unique for every instance so if you have more than one axe for example this should be different so these two should be different for each axe while the main ID here will be the same so this is used really when uh, referencing which item is in your inventory or what um, prefab to load while this one is for the save file to know uh, where each item is located in the scene for example speaking of save files um, I will show you where everything is saved so if you go in script data you have a file called player data here So I don't know if you're a bit familiar with scripting, but if you are, any variable that are inside this class, player data, is the things that will be saved in the save file. So for, for example, you have the day, the time of the day, the position of the player, and then you have also all the items, equipment, construction. So if you want to add something in the save file, this is where you probably want to add the variable and you can access this class in the script uh, by using player data dot get and then you can access anything from there 
Another thing I probably want to know is how to change the UI. So this is in the prefab folder, UI. So you have two versions here. You have the UI canvas, which is for desktop, and then the mobile one. Uh, one thing that I forgot to show, I'll show you right now, is how to switch between desktop and mobile. So if you go into File, Build Settings. So right now we are on uh, desktop here. But if you want to test the game in Unity as if it was on mobile, so with the on-screen joystick and all the controls that fit better with mobile, then you need to click on Android, for example, and click on Switch Platform. And when you do that, then it will automatically switch to mobile controls. But for now, we'll stay on the PC one. So back to the UI, if you click on UI Canvas here and click on Open Prefab, then here you will have access to all the UI that you can change yourself. Uh, sometimes in the UI, I like to work in 2D mode, so it's easier to move things around. So for example, if I click on the clock here and I don't like to have the clock here, I can move it here, for example. Um, if you want to see one of the menu that are hidden, for example, the craft info panel, you will need to click on it and then here you have alpha and set it to one. This is changed automatically by the script, but if you want to work with it, uh, it's usually better to see what it looks like so you can set it to one. And later when you're done with it, you can just hide it again and in the game it will toggle this automatically. Okay, if you want to change the crafting categories, you can do that in the UI. So you need to go into the gameplay, craft. And then if you click on one of the slot here, you can see that each button is linked to a group here. So you can see craft tools, craft weapons, so you can set the icon and then the group that you want to display. And then also when you go in resources item and you click on any item, you can set a group uh, to each item. So for example, the axe is in the craft tools group. So this means that it will appear in this uh, tools category here in the crafting menu, but only if the craftable checkbox is uh, on. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is maybe just an overview of all the main important scripts. So if you're um, thinking about changing the script or doing your own coding, this would be really useful. So if you click on managers here, you have uh, all the main managers. So the game is the script that will um, first load the save file and then also load all the other prefab that are important, like the audio manager and the UI canvas. It's also the script that manage things like the time of the day and also that load all the items and objects when you load a save file. The render is more like an optimization script that will uh, remove all the objects that are far away from the player and disable them to make sure that the game runs smoothly. And then the data is the script that will load all the data in the game. So basically everything that is in the resources folder. So here you can set um, what are the different folders for each list of objects that will be loaded. And also you have the main data file, game data. And here you can change, for example, um, the intensity of the light during the day, during the night. You can also change the game time multiplier. So if you put a 144, for example, that's mean that the game time will be that time faster than real time. So for example, if I put 24, then one day in the game will be one hour of real life. And then you have player controls here that manages. Uh, so this one is for keyboard controls. And then this one is for either mouse or uh, touch on mobile. And then if I click on player character, here you have the main character script with all its properties. And then this one that uh, manages animation. And this one, it manages the equipment that will appear on the character when it's equipped.
So this is it I think for the main script. If you want more information about all the scripts and all the properties you can go uh, open this PDF here survival engine in the main folder. It will explain a lot of uh, other things that I did not explain in this video. There's also a lot of other tutorial video on my YouTube channel so feel free to look at them or to join the discord if you have more questions.